Hey, what's up all of you beautiful subscribers? Welcome back to the Jack Chapel Show. And these are some businesses that you can start with no money. All right, so I've started a few of these myself, and I know a lot of people that have started the ones that I really haven't got into. But we're gonna tackle some of these today, and hopefully these help you out and give you some ideas of some businesses that you can start uh, this year or in the coming years with really no money. All right, so let's just jump into this here. The first one, I gotta mention, gotta get it out of the way here, and that is, well, there is still a chance to do this, but it's a content creator. And I know, I know, I mentioned this a lot, in my videos, but content creation, okay? So essentially an influencer. There's still time, despite what all of you think out there, there's still this window. There's a window out there for you guys to make a bunch of money through social media, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it may be, but the time's closing. The window is closing. Now this is the last real opportunity I've seen, which is TikTok, all right? And I'm starting to take it a little bit more seriously now myself. And TikTok is, imagine this is your opportunity to jump on Facebook in like 2011 probably. So a point where a social media company is starting to mature a little bit, but you still have time for that rapid growth. That's what TikTok is right now. Right, so content creator, as you guys know, I've given you guys my numbers too. I mean, there are some individual videos that I've had on this YouTube channel that have brought in directly, you know, like 40 grand or so and indirectly hundreds of thousands of dollars. All right, and I'm not that big of a creator. There's still time for you out there to become a content creator yourself. And I know a lot of you thinking out there are like, well, I don't know what to do. I don't know, you know what to talk about or what to put on. Just, just do something. Just do something, all right? You know what's funny is that out of everyone that says, I'm gonna start this, I wanna do YouTube, I wanna do this, that, in my real life, you know how many of them have actually started it? One, one person out of everyone that I've talked to who wanted to take social media seriously has taken it seriously. And guess what? It's going well for them. So it's time for you to start. Now, whatever it is, you don't have to talk about business. If you have an interest in video games, talk about video games, play video games, whatever. Like there, there, there's still a niche out there. There's still an audience out there for whatever your, your skill set may be, whatever you want to talk about. If you're not comfortable on camera, guess what? Go back and look at some of my videos from my old science channel. All right, from, from 2012, I couldn't talk on camera. So whatever your obstacles you think you have are for becoming a content creator, it's BS. It's BS. Go out there, do it now. This is the, I'm telling you, you got like two years left before it really starts to close up for, for most people. You got a couple of years left, all right? So go out there, make some content for everyone to see, make your brand known. Then if you wanna launch your own other business through a content network, Go ahead and do that through your own brand, go ahead. All right, move on to number two. And obviously content creation, I mentioned why it's no money, is because if you have a phone, these phones, I mean, phones now shoot at 4K. All right, just five years ago, a 4K camera for me, it was like, this was a couple thousand dollars, this camera. It's like 1,500, 2,000 dollars, whatever it was. All right, you have the equipment right now in your hand, maybe you should get a microphone for your phone, which is 50 bucks. That's all, $50 and you can launch a YouTube channel, it's free. Facebook, Instagram, whatever. All right, so content creator. Let's move on to the next one. And this one is one that I know a lot of young people out there do not find that sexy. But um, these are still some of the most successful companies out there today. Because there's not a lot of competition for them in a lot of wealthy areas. And that is labor companies. Meaning, by labor I mean cleaning services, uh, you know, landscaping, window cleaning, uh, just, you know, did I say house painting, whatever. There's a bunch of stuff, you know, housework, whatever it is. You can start your own labor company. Everyone knows how to clean, right? Everyone, you might not know how to landscape, but you know, so that's kind of an iffy one. But there are lots of things you can do where really you just need a website. So, you know, $5, uh, maybe some, you know, if you're doing cleaning, cleaning supplies uh, or join an app Right? I'm sure that there's an app out there for a cleaning marketplace or something like that, or become a dog walker, like something that you actually physically have to get up to do. I know a lot of young people don't wanna do it, but that is really where the opportunity is right now, in my opinion, for a lot of these businesses here, because no one wants to do them, which is why you can make a lot of money right now. So whatever it is, you wanna be a dog walker, whatever, go for it. You wanna try landscaping, clean, whatever it is, 
that is, those are all skills that really, I mean, no one, everyone knows how to walk a dog for the most part. You just walk, make sure it doesn't bite anyone and clean up its poop. It's really simple. No education needed. Cleaning, a little bit more. You, you do need to know what to use on the floors and stuff, but you can look this all up. Equipment, you know, costs 50 bucks, 100 bucks if you want a mop or whatever. So again, relatively no money, depending on whatever labor company you want to start. But that is what I've seen, again, personally in my own life, I know two people that started their own labor companies and are doing really well right now. So take with that what you will. Let's move on to the next one here. This one is, the next one I'm going to mention, kind of more of a side business. Uh, it's tough to make a ton of money unless you do one thing, which I'll get to, which is affiliate marketing. So this is getting tougher to do nowadays because it seems that everyone has an Amazon link and is, and is an affiliate. But there, you can do a lot of other things. You can be an affiliate for Amazon, get paid 5, 10, 15% for referring people to the website. You can also go onto a site like ClickBank or go on, you know what, here's another thing. So ClickBank or go onto people's course websites. There's people that sell courses, uh, including myself. Although I, well, I don't know if I actually have this feature on mine, I forget. But you can go onto their websites. So if someone sells a $100 course and you get someone to buy that course, you typically get about $35 cash. It's that simple. So uh, again, go to like ClickBank, go onto people's course websites. Uh, if you get people to sign up for subscription, sometimes you get a monthly referral. And so affiliate marketing, it's getting more crowded these days. And it's really tough to do. This was really, really good to do a few years ago, about four or five years ago, a little bit further back too. It's getting harder now, but there's still an opportunity, especially for especially because e-learning has grown so much over the last few years. I would say go into high profit margin online sales, online affiliate sales. So like something like courses or something like that's digital media. And if you get people to, ref to and if you get an affiliate link for those websites, you typically get a higher percentage because there's no cost for the person to actually like ship a physical item. It's just already on there. They, they just like more sales. So you can get up to 30, 35, 40, 45% in some cases. Um, so again, affiliate marketing, that's on the list too. And all you need is just a link. That's all, a link and share it with people. That's all. Let's go to the next one. And this one, uh, okay, well, I, I don't know. This one's gonna be a little touchy for me. But there is a niche for this because I did this myself, as you guys know. There's still a niche in a lot of places, despite what you may think, to make a delivery company. And the profit margins may not be that high. Like, as you guys know, for my, for I did Joysk, you know, I probably after everything, after the server costs and everything, so I was doing way more than necessary. If I were to just have done the delivery company, I could have probably made about 12 to 15 bucks an hour. All right, if I were to scale that, probably could have done well, but because I had all this tech and stuff behind it, I was doing more things and shipping all around the world, I was really making like eight bucks an hour, which is not enough for me to, to be, for me to continue going profit, all right? Because revenue was much higher. But delivery company, uh, if you were to start a delivery company, you just have a website, market it to people, it's $5 set up a website, maybe you start to get some customers. Uh, now this involves some tech, so I'll stay away from this for a second, actually. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it does require so it's, it's low cost to start up. So you're not going to have to rent an office. Uh, you may need a car actually. So a lot of you super young people out there probably not going to work, but if you have even some beat up car and you know how to set up a website delivery company, you could even just have like a kind of a static menu of groceries or whatever to pick up hundred items. There would be a lot of people that would be willing to, I I've known, I know people are willing to pay a 50% surplus on most items in order to get an item to their house in under two hours without having to go through Uber Eats or without having to go through a subscription or there's still a lot of underserved cities too. So again, this is one that I've proved there's still a market for. It's just that you need a little bit of technical expertise to do it. All right, eBooks. All right, so this is getting tougher too because again, all these digital ones are getting tougher because everyone wants to do it. But again, I had uh, having someone on my podcast. It may have not come. It may have come out. May have not come out by now. Uh, but you know, my friend wrote a book and he's selling the book, and a lot of people like it, five stars. And there's still a niche for books out there, especially if you're original. 
but it's getting harder. I know some people that only pump out 20 page eBooks and or 10 page eBooks, sell it for $3 and they'll pump out a hundred a year. And maybe one of them does really well. One of them gets them $10,000. All right. One of them gets $20,000, $50,000 profit. And again, the cost of this is only you writing. It's your time and creativity. That's all it costs. So, and it's not even, if you, that's only writing fiction, if you're writing nonfiction, you can pretty much just go to Wikipedia, find an interesting story to write about and give your own spin on it. And you could do that. If you're write a 15 page summary about the life of Warren Buffett or something, uh, and you were to do it for every entrepreneur out there, maybe one of those takes off and you make a lot of money. Still possible today. All right. I still know people selling eBooks. So eBooks, that's another one. Info, info products, info products, AKA courses. So if you are an expert in anything or even relatively an expert, if you're an intermediate level. So for me, I've been doing some things for, uh, I'm pretty high skilled in a few areas. So programming is one of them. I've been doing the stock market stuff for a while, been in real estate for a long time. There's a few things that I'm pretty comfortable with uh, teaching. And if you have any one of those skills, so it could be, you know what, you know, what's funny. I have seen these videos online about, pro, about people that are pretty high ranked in video games that you know, they're not the highest, they're not pro players, but they get paid five bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour to coach other people to tell beginners how to get better at video games. And, um, I think I've seen, I think I saw this for counter-strike actually. I know there's probably a bunch of these out there, but if you're decent at like halo, uh, or if you're decent at, you know, grand GTA or something like that, maybe you want to teach others how to get better. That's something you could do. Again, that's just one example of a course, a course in tutoring. I guess this should be under one thing. You just put up your course or whatever on teachable Udemy, Kajabi, whatever it may be, put it up there. And if it sells, it sells. Or if you want to tutor someone, go onto something like Fiverr and eventually you could get some clients. So it's not, uh, it's not, it really doesn't take much money to do this. It just requires time and usually a camera, like a, a phone camera or even a webcam, which all of you watching this probably have at least one of those. You either have a computer with a cam or you have a phone with a camera. So really no cost there. Apart from some registration fees, sometimes if you want to sign up, sign up for a website like Kajabi, that might cost you a hundred bucks. Sometimes Udemy might be like 40 bucks. There are lots of websites where it costs money to actually sell a course, but Again, long run, if you're planning on actually selling it, taking it seriously, then it's worth the investment. Okay, so I want to get to this one now. And this one is the most talked about one that I think, um, I, that I've been asked to get talked, that I've been asked to talk about, or especially from young people. That's drop shipping. And I'm going to make a whole video on this. I think that drop shipping, I think that the people that really make drop shipping and make money from it are not the people actually doing the drop shipping. I think that the people that make money doing the drop shipping are the people that sell the courses to teach you how to drop ship because drop shipping has such low margins. Usually, unless you're selling some knockoff item, which you can be, you can be, but drop shipping, uh, margins usually are low. So when someone tells you I made a hundred thousand dollars from selling this toy and I didn't have to touch the product and I, it was really shipped directly from China essentially, or sometimes directly from China to Amazon warehouse, which I don't know if that's allowed anymore, but usually how that hundred thousand dollars after everything equates to maybe $5,000 profit, $10,000 profit. And that is insanely difficult to sell a hundred thousand dollars worth of anything. So when people tell you I made hundred thousand dollars doing this, no, their take home much less than that. If someone tells you that, that they have 50% margins, they're either selling something that is completely original or it's fake or they're making stuff up if it's insanely high margins. So that's just my opinion. And if you get to the point where you get more than hundred thousand dollars worth of sales, you need to scale up, things start getting more complex. You need to hire people. And it's tough to kind of scale a drop shipping business for the most part. So there's still something to be said though. I don't want to hate on drop shipping because there's definitely still a market for, well, this is what sales is. It's you buy something from China for cheaper or somewhere else in the world, Thailand, whatever. 
you import it. So let's say you buy a bulk toothbrushes for 50 cents. All right, 50 cents. Again, the toothbrush is a bad example, but whatever. 50 cents each, and you import a thousand of them. That's $500. And uh, you sell them online for whatever, three bucks. And they're super cheap, but you have to ship them. And at the end of the day, those margins might only be 30 to 40%. And this is toothbrushes, super competitive, so you're probably not gonna sell. Um, but there is still something to be said about importing products over from cheaper areas, importing them, selling them for much more to people with more money, with your own branding. So there is something to be said about all that. I'm, I'm not crapping on it entirely, because that's how people, that's how everything, Pretty much everything is made overseas. So every product that I bought, every product that you buy, is pretty much one version of drop shipping. It's just more complicated with American and North American companies, Canadian companies. So uh, that could be its whole other whole uh, video in itself. So I do have a bunch more videos on general business ideas like this and uh, kind of what to do. So uh, there's a whole playlist on my channel, so go check out those videos if you want some more ideas about what kind of businesses you can start. I have tons of those. And uh, click on those. Please subscribe down below, and I'll see you in the next video that you click on.